the basic concept of of phylogeny is to is a tree so to obtain a tree you will need something like a multiple sequence alignment or something that relates all the trees all the entries in the tree to each other it doesn't have to be multiple sequence alignments it could be some um, anatomic feature or even a pass or pass alignment etc so a, a tree can often be split into different ways. The common way we see a flat tree is often the way that is depicted here on top. You have a common ancestor, and then you have a number of different species and how they relate to each other, or genes and species or something. However, often, almost always, the common ancestor doesn't exist any longer. So we don't really know what, what, what was the common ancestor. And actually what we all, all often know is just how things relate to each other. So this put, so put this root of the tree is not always trivial. So if you look at the finches here, you have the small the small tree finch, the medium tree finch, the large finch, the cocos finch, etc. And you can then measure how similar it is with each other and develop some kind of uh, So what's in the bottom is is a is a tree that just describes how these finches are related to each other. But it doesn't describe what is common ancestor. You don't know if that was more similar to a cactus finch or to a small tree finch, whatever. So that is what's called the unrooted tree. So what, what is clear in this is actually what is important is actually the distance between two species. So the distance in the, both these trees should relate to how many, how, how, uh, how far away, how different they are. So in sequence terms, it would be how many mutations has happened between two species. So uh, here you have trees that are related uh, and, and between four birds. You see that they are different. Some of the peak the beaks are different, different and the legs are different and the colors. So you have the yellow and the brown birds. And this tree depicts that the Brown birds are more similar to each other than the yellow birds because the distance between these in this tree are, are is smaller. And also you predict that the two groups of yellow brown birds are more different from each other from each other than they are within the same group. But it also somehow uh, if you would measure distance, then maybe you can't make a tree like that, because maybe this you have to adjust the tree more like this. If you count the number of mutations. So that means that between the two yellow there are nine mutations. And so to do that you would and you would have to have if you calculate the mutations from to the common ancestor, which is in the root here, you would have, and you want to make all, every line equal long, you would have to have a tree that looks like this. However, uh, a perfect tree of course should look at like that, but then that, that would assume that you have the same mutation rate in every branch all the time. And that is also not the case. So more likely you would have to adjust the tree to look something like that if your reader would like to depict all the length of a, each branch correctly. Another important concept is that we want to separate species trees from gene trees. As I said before, there are often cases where genes are duplicated, so two copies of genes. And uh, th that means that in some cases this duplication happened before speciation, and sometimes after. So you can, for instance, take this human, you have three human genes here or something. Of course, human is more similar to chicken and less similar to other animals. But uh, the human one gene is actually more similar to the Cerebus one gene than it is to the human two gene. Because they are, the duplication happened before the separation of Cerebus and humans. And the same as human two and chicken two. And, 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 and so, uh, and also there's actually more similar to Catostomus one. So, so you can see you have to, so it's not always that the species, so if you don't have, if you only had the human one gene and the chicken two gene, you would assume, well not the chicken one gene, if that was missing, the data set, you would think that Cynopus was more similar to human than, than it was to chicken. But in, in principle, you want to have this tree that can be represented as a split. So basically, whenever you have a split in tree, 
something has happened. Either Xenos duplicated or copied or lost or something, or it has been speciation. So here you can define all the splits. So that the raccoons are most strongly bears, and that the dogs, and then the sea lions are then related to each other with the seals, and etc. Et et and the monkeys is the outlier. And you have some kind of mesh of the distance of them. So often, but often if you make the tree, you have different data or different data sets, and you can get different trees. So often you represent it as a mushroom split, just basically if you make a hundred trees, how many times do you see the same split? So in this case, the raccoon bear split and dog split is only seen in half of the trees, so that's not so reliable. On the other hand, the sea lion seal split is in 100% of the cases is more reliable. So we can deduct that it's certain that sea lions and seals are more similar to each other than dogs or others. But exactly the relationship between bears, raccoons, and dogs is less, it's from this data set less well defined. And the results are in between. So maybe it's more correct to define the tree like this. We basically take one of the significant post uh, values and just says that raccoon bears and dogs are from this data equally related to each other and equal distance from the sea lion seals. <laughs>